and uh, I would like to to invite another one user, uh, which uh, which shows you how to use lidar for forest survey, how to use a backpack for forest survey from the ground, how to combine with data, and I think it's very interesting. And um, Evgeny, yeah, hello. I'll start sharing my screen. So I would like to present uh, some of our first results on uh, using this kind of, I call it aeroterrestrial ultra high resolution laser scanner for tree wise forest inventory. And uh, I would like to say thank you to this company Topodron. We are very much interested on their solutions. So we started to use Topodron solutions already several years ago when uh, Topodron issued or published their drones and then we, we've got those drones for our research purposes and once we heard about the new solution on laser scanning I, I just invited immediately Maxim to Finland to come to test it and uh, to see to test the solution in our research forest. Just a few words about myself. I'm uh, working as a, a senior research scientist in Natural Resource Institute Finland and uh, in my past, I was working quite a lot in different research activities, and I was deeply involved into the forest inventory. For example, I was in, involved on, do, on developing national forest inventory system of Vietnam. Uh, at the moment, I'm doing uh, research in Natural Resource Institute Finland on dig digital technologies for practical forest management. On, uh, I'm doing my research on forest fires forecasting and also early detection of pests and disease and uh, invasive species. So I'm, I have a long experience on digitizing forest resources and uh, flying uh, drones. And of course, I know all those pros and cons when you are working with photogrammetry and photogrammetry, of course, it's a nice solution, but not always. So if you want to go into details, you need a better, better solutions, a better approaches. In our research work in Nature Research Institute Finland, we are at the moment using uh, Mavic and Matris with upgraded solutions from Topadron. And uh, uh, we also have uh, Phantoms with uh, GMSS receiver. And uh, uh, we installed, for example, on our Matris, multispectral cameras. So at the moment we are mainly, in past we are working with Sequoia. Nowadays we are working with this bundle of Red Edge in Mix and uh, also with Altum sensors because those sensors uh, could be cross calibrated with the Sentinel data, which is very interesting and which is very promising. We are also working with the Wingtra drone and using it for different large scale applications. But uh, uh, in uh, several research projects, I faced the uh, challenge that when you fly those equipment with, uh, 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 for, for example, three wires inventory, you could get very nicely trees. You could get quite many, many things. But then uh, a traditional approach requires that after, for example, aerial tri triangulation and photogrammetric ground point cloud reconstruction, you still need to go to forest to measure the trees. And then uh, uh, unfortunately with this photogrammetry solution, you cannot see under the trees. And uh, there are several challenges in related to photogrammetry. Uh, first of all, that uh, you don't see small trees. I'm talking about trees which are less than one meter in height. And uh, uh, because those are simply not visible in dense canopy. And for some of applications, for example, in Finland, we are now developing continuous cover forestry approach. We really need to know the location of small seedlings in order to better plan future forest operations. Then the second challenge is if you want to do, for example, forest inventory, with the photogrammetry, you still need to go by foot to forest and establish your ground truth data. So you still need to measure to identify the trees on, on, on the point cloud and you need to measure the uh, trees uh, diameter in order to be able to calculate the diameter of all the trees from the model. And uh, this method is actually human dependent. So you need to go to forest, you need to establish sample plot and uh, uh, you need to get a fixed solution under the dense canopy, which is sometimes a very challenging task. And uh, there are many uh, issues related to it. Uh, another challenge with photogrammetry in forestry, for example, if you uh, try to apply to, to fly in Finland, uh, for example, during winter time. So uh, the flying time during winter time, for example, in December is very short. So for example, in UN, so in December, we have only uh, three or four hours of really good uh, lighting conditions uh, where we could fly the drone. And it means your time is very much limited. 
And uh, there is another challenges. For example, this photogrammetry, what do you see? You see the uh, top, of, uh, usually the points which are covering the top of the crown. So you don't see the shape of the trunk. And, for, and, and of course, you are not able to see or to measure the height of the branches of different sizes. And which is very interesting and very important because if you know the location of the height of the branches, for example, dead branches, it's a kind of one of the indicator of a wood quality and means uh, wood value. When Topodron announced this solution, so I invited Maxim to visit us to Joensu, to Finland, to make a test site. So we used one of our research plot where we made a lot of measurements. We, we measured about 1,000 trees uh, where we regularly flying drones for several years already, where we practically know every single tree and every single seedling location. We have even planted the trees with a precise GNSS receiver. So this is kind of, we have a, like one case near UN, so we have, we have this kind of precision forestry in real test. And uh, uh, Maxim was very happy to come and we made the test. So we installed uh, this uh, topo drone LiDAR on our Matrix 210 and then we start flying. And uh, as you can see from the photographs, it was quite a challenging task. We practically were flying during the night time. So because light time was very much limited. But then uh, after flying uh, uh, LiDAR, I encourage Maxim also to try to use it as a kind of terrestrial uh, way. And one way, of course, you can put it to backpack and then you can go to the, for example, to forest or to some, uh, some of your field areas. But uh, one was a more efficient way would be, for example, to sit down on the squadron bike and then just drive it through the forest and, and get the coverage. So let's go to those two data sets. So by this way, we collected two data sets, one from air and the second data set I called like terrestrial or ground data set. As you can see, a uh, result of laser aerial laser scanning from 70 meters, uh, we've got a very nice point cloud. And then after classification of the point cloud, we've got a digital elevation model. Actually, this digital elevation models, the detailness of this digital elevation model was very, very big surprise for me because uh, the point cloud density was very high. So it means we were able to get su such minor details. For example, I found some of, the, some of the small channels which I never knew, knew about the existence in this area, even though I, I spent several years walking on this area and by my understanding, I was knowing, I'm, I know the area very well. Then the second step of processing, we normalized the point cloud by the digital elevation model. And it's immediately give us a very quick overview of the value of the forest resources. Practically, as you can see from the screen, all the red areas representing the uh, commercially valuable trees. So mature, valuable, high trees with uh, a big commercial value. Green, you can see very clearly young stands and then blue is the ground. And here you can see also the power lines crossing, crossing the area. Let's look into the data. So what do we get out of this LiDAR data? So uh, I will not talk about in my presentation about accuracy. Of course, we checked the accuracy of this uh, data set. And I was very much surprised how accurate the data was collected with this device. And uh, I would maybe speak more about accuracy in about the terrestrial laser scanning later. Here you can see on this slide the number of points per square meter. And the, you can see, of course, at the areas where the, the flying patterns were happening. So we have higher number of points uh, per square meter. But on average, as you can see from this graph, or graph on average, we are getting about 150 points per square meter, which is quite high for many applications. How we can use this high point density? One very simple solution is to process the data and to get it individual trees. So this is totally automatic classification of the point cloud. So I was able in a few minutes to extract all the trees. Here you can see on the slide the trees colored by the tree number. So it's not a tree species, it's just a tree number, random tree number. And uh, uh, this was a really big surprise for me because uh, this point cloud allowed us to uh, identify even quite small trees, for example, 3.5 meter height. And this uh, identification of almost 300,000 trees, it took only 20 minutes. So if you think about measuring all those trees by in the field, 
it's a, a mission impossible if you would like to do it with traditional techniques. What what else we could get out of it? Uh, if we get we, we get a trees location, then we could measure the crown diameter, crown area. We could automatically get, of course, the location of every single tree. But what is the problem with the aerial data processing? From aerial data processing, we don't see the tree diameter. And this is a kind of not a new, so it's uh, uh, those people which are using laser scanning for forest inventory, usually the process is going this way, that you cannot measure the diameter directly. And then you again need to go to the field to, uh, to uh, establish sample plots. And then through the uh, ratio between the crown diameter and crown area, you can, for example, calculate the tree diameter. But this was a kind of one of the challenge of traditional laser scanning. And uh, we tried at the same time to use a bit different approach. So we use the same scanner after the flight, we just take away scanner from the, uh, from the drone and then we mount it on a backpack and then we sit to the quad bike and then we start to drive on, on a road in the same area. And you can see here the data point cloud what we received from the road. Roughly we've got all the points within the distance of seven, uh, from 70 to 100 meters from the sc scanner. And uh, we also increase the number of scanning angles. So the, when the drone is flying, the number of scanning angles is limited because there is no sense to scan, let's say, above the drone or some other areas. But while uh, you are driving or using an terrestrial mode, you can use all this 360 degrees of scanning. And because your movement speed is not so high like movement speed of drone, it's usually giving you very huge uh, point density. Uh, one of the disadvantage of this kind of terrestrial laser scanning is, of course, uh, for example, uh, you have in your point cloud also a quad bike, you have a shoulders, you have heads, you have uh, your colleague maybe traveling with you in this point cloud. That's why we removed all the points closer than two meters to the point cloud. And this has allowed us really to uh, get high quality point cloud. But uh, uh, there is still chance to improve its accuracy by proper selection of angles and distances. And this would, I believe, crystallize the point cloud for future measurements. Let's look in the, how big density of point cloud we could get. So we were driving with uh, quadricycle, um, with quad bike with uh, quite a normal speed. We, did, we just uh, go with something like maybe, I don't know, 20 kilometers per hour, so not, not very fast because it was a, a, not a normal road, but like a field road. And with this speed, we've got roughly from 500 to 10,000 points per square meter. And of course here, of course you can influence the result because slower you're moving on the ground, the higher point density you get. And, but uh, kind of uh, outcome from this test showed that on average, if we go with the same scanner on the ground, we have like two times higher point clouds than from, from aerial platform. And uh, uh, why we wanted to have this kind of so dense point cloud, because if you then using the same scanner on the, on the ground, you can increase not only the density of the points, but what you can do also, you can increase also the number of angles, the number of viewing angles of the scanner. And this is giving you very nice, interesting opportunities. For example, uh, one of the way what you can do, you can measure the tree diameters directly. So using the point cloud data. So here on this graph, you can see that the tree, tree diameters were automatically, trees were automatically identified and the tree diameters at the breast height, meaning the height 1.3 uh, meter were automatically measured. And here, uh, this uh, terrestrial point cloud allowed us to identify very small trees. So on aerial scanner, aerial point cloud, we were able to identify the smallest tree was 3.5 meter. In terrestrial laser scanning data, we were able to identify the smallest tree, which was less than one meter. And uh, uh, from this uh, uh, terrestrial scanning data set, we automatically measured the diameter of 4,000 trees. We measured the crowns of those 4,000 trees, tree height, crown diameter, and with most important, we are able to get the tree diameter directly from terrestrial uh, point cloud. One interesting issue about accuracy 
uh, because uh, as Maxim said, the accuracy of the point cloud is uh, varying, uh, varying between from uh, about, let's say roughly from three to four centimeters. But when you're going on this terrestrial level, since your number of points in, is increasing, uh, there, is, there are certain ways how to increase the accuracy of the diameter measurement. And I checked uh, those diameter measurements with our field observations. And I would like to say that from 1,000 trees, our average accuracy of these terrestrial measurements where uh, the error in uh, uh, diameter uh, measurements from terrestrial point clouds was less than two centimeters. But I believe there are still ways to improve it by crystallizing the point cloud and by improving the point cloud. So if you think about like why we use this terrestrial laser scanning to measure diameters. So in about one hour or let's say half an hour, we measured 4,000 trees. If you think about like you will do the same job uh, with traditional forestry uh, equipment, like take, for example, the caliper and go and establish a plot. It would take us about 17 days. So 138 man hours to measure all those 4,000 trees. And here we were able to get those 4,000 trees is in less than half an hour. In Finland, the laser scanning is nothing new. So in, in Finland, in forestry, uh, the, uh, the forest inventory program started already in uh, 2010 when the uh, systematically big areas in Finland were scanned from, from the air. This program, which was uh, in last 10 years, was aiming for a point density of half point or up to one point per square meter. And this data is freely available and because it was collected by taxpayer money. And now there is a new program in Finland going on with on forest inventory, which is aiming to increase the point density almost 10 times. So the current point density we will have, we will have like five points per square meter. With topodron solution, we have an opportunity to get point density from the air of 150 points per square meter. And if we add this terrestrial laser scanning is about 500 points per square meter. So practically this, I would say that this solution allows us to make this three-dimensional zoom almost 30 times on forest structure, which is, uh, I think, quite promising. And if you think about flying a drone took us about 20 minutes and then driving quad bike took us about 30 minutes. I would say with this technology, we were able to measure very accurately uh, the trees over the area within uh, with the speed of something like one hectare per minute. So from my point of view, this is very nice combination allowed us to uh, uh, do this tree wise forest inventory and uh, drone allows you to get a large coverage to measure inaccessible areas where you cannot go by foot or it's too costly to go by foot, or you cannot drive, for example, a quad bike or something, something like this, or car. And uh, to uh, collect those diameters, you could use a quad bike, or it is possible to mount the same laser scanner on a car or any kind of vehicle. Or, and, uh, or you can just walk through the forest and, and with this scanner, you get uh, a lot of data. Our next steps, we are at the moment testing this data. We are looking to the ways how to improve the accuracy and uh, I think we are looking mostly nowadays to the additional values from the data fusion. So what kind of additional value we could get by fusing the aerial data with the terrestrial data? And uh, I think in future, and uh, be because I like this uh, topodrone approach that it's like open source uh, thing, so you can really modify a lot of parameters. It's not like a many commercial system. Everything is locked here. It is possible to modify quite many parameters. And I think that in future, we could change the drone flying parameters to achieve the same accuracy like terrestrial scanning. But of course, if it's drone, it would be more efficient and uh, uh, faster to get a bigger cover coverage. So what kind of new type of measurements we could get from this scanner? The, I think the, one of the very interesting issues is to measure crown base, base height. Because crown base height is practically indication where you have the end of your soul walk. So it's very important value to, to get accurate assessment of the wood value. Then you can measure, for example, the strengthness of the stem. So you can find those stems which are not suitable for, for example, soil walk production, which is quite interesting to get really accurate commercial value of the forest. 
With this scanner, you can also get quite good approximate estimation of the age of the trees. Of course, you cannot, you know, get up to one year, but there are ways how to calculate from the structure of the trees, the age of the trees. Those parameters like crown base height, diameter height, the structure of the crowns could be used to get a wood quality assessment, could be used to get wood assortments assessment and really do this precise valuation of the wood. We found that this scanner was able to identify even small seedlings. We not yet find, found a way how to map the small seedlings from the drone, but we were able to see small seedlings less than 20 centimeters height from the terrestrial scanner. And uh, I think this, this technology offering us very interesting approach towards inventory during the winter and inventory during the night. So this could be done simultaneously. And uh, uh, I believe it's, it's really an interesting opportunity. So if there are any questions, I would be happy to answer. Uh, Evgeny, thank you for your uh, very good presentation. And I, I, I was really impressed and I was re really proud to work with you in Finland. And I have some questions about your work because uh, I was very impressed about your data processing. And uh, how do you think, how fast you can process data set to get to precise counts of trees, for example, and uh, number of trees, uh, depths of uh, trees, uh, how fast you can uh, process data uh, yeah. after flight? Thank you very much, Maxim. This is a very interesting question, and really I can show it the uh, speed here. I made the same area several times before by uh, uh, kind of photogrammetry approach. So to cover the same area, I needed to make something about four flights with uh, Phantom or with Mavic or with Matrix in order to get a kind of good coverage and good representation of the tree. And this, uh, to calculate this amount of data, I spent it something like three days just running calculations. And for my calculations, I was using quite powerful cluster system based on several computers and uh, with uh, several graphical cards. And uh, uh, this took me really, uh, this processing took longer time than collecting collection of the data. So I would say to, uh, to do the same quality assessment of the same area, I would spend something like one working week. While with laser scanning, uh, we spent together something like totally one hour of data collection and data processing was um, maximum two hours. So I see very clear benefit and uh, uh, increase in speed. But and also, what about uh, this is without taking, but this is also like just pure, let's say, uh, uh, data processing without field data collection, which would require more and more days. So to, to, for example, then I would need to send the crew to, to the field to measure the trees on the ground to collect uh, additional parameters. So it's, it's really a long process while uh, combining uh, drone data collection with terrestrial data collection, uh, the same area could be inventoried with higher accuracy and almost like 100 uh, times faster. So, and the next question, is it necessary to make any field work when you use LiDAR uh, to measure trees? Uh, is it necessary to go to the measure tape to measure trees? Or it's possible to measure directly from a point cloud? So how do you think right now? Of course, you know, as we all know that all the maps are lying. <laughs> and at the beginning, I would suggest to check the accuracy and to check how accurate, uh, it, uh, uh, the, how accurate result you get. But once you will be sure that you can really see the, to get, you are able to get the accurate data, then you could get all those measurements directly from the terrestrial point cloud. So for example, all diameters, I believe could be measured from terrestrial point cloud. So you don't need and, uh, to come to forest mm -hmm. and touch the trees anymore. You just drive, for example, car, or you just drive a bicycle or quad bike, and then you get quite a lot of me detailed measurements from, from this information. Also, those measurements could be checked and could be corrected in office. This is, I think, quite a big advantage because today in your answer is almost like minus 25. I would think I would not be able to spend maybe more than several hours in the field today. But with a cup of coffee, explore, exploring your point cloud, you can, for example, select good trees and you can filter the trees by different, for example, uh, accuracy standards 
And there are tools nowadays how to estimate how accurate diameter fitting was carried out. What is your opinion about photogrammetry survey and LIDAR survey? Uh, what is more accurate? What do you think right now? Uh, because I know you use a lot of photogrammetry data sets before and you have a big coverage. And uh, how do you think? Is uh, LIDAR competitive with the photogrammetry or photogrammetry is not competitive with LIDAR right now? How do you think? Obvious, uh, LIDAR gives a huge advantage on, on uh, accuracy and uh, speed of uh, data processing. But of course, the best, co uh, the best solution would be in data fusion. So the best way would be to fly, for example, LIDAR with a camera to be able to colorize, for example, the point cloud. But there are always kind of, it depends on applications. So uh, photogrammetry, the biggest advantage of the photogrammetry, it's a very cheap solution. So in many places, for example, if you do some projects in Africa, you cannot send a LIDAR there. It would be maybe too risky. But you can send, for example, a cheap drone and do some inventory of some plantations with, 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 the, with the photogrammetry. But when you need accuracy and when you need a productivity and when you need, uh, for example, really uh, industrial applications like being able to measure the forest during the night or during a cold uh, weather uh, or difficult weather conditions, LIDAR gives you very interesting and uh, very promising opportunity. I think the future is in fusion. And how do you think about uh, multispectral data? Is it possible to use LIDAR without multispectral data to define uh, a type of trees, for example? Yeah, uh, it's, uh, I think it's, you can see even from this, this slide, you can see here that, I'll try to make it bigger, like if you look more carefully on the, on the shape of the crowns, this is a birch. For example, you see, the, look on this tree, this is a birch. Is it a ground survey or is no, it a... It's, uh, it's, it's aerial survey. Aerial survey. And mm -hmm. all others, those kind of columns are spruces. So there are nowadays techniques how you can identify the species from uh, laser scanning data. And this technique is based on those alpha shape metrics. So practically it is possible to identify the species just uh, analyzing the LIDAR data. And uh, the accuracy of this identification is uh, almost the same as you would use a multispectral camera to uh, recognize the species. And also one of the issues is the multispectral cameras. One of the disadvantage of multispectral cameras, you can use them only in uh, summertime and you need all leaves all to be open to identify the species. If there is no any photosynthesis, you cannot use multispectral cameras. So that's why increasing the density of the laser scanning data, it's one way to uh, be able to estimate quite many parameters directly from the point cloud. Does our software generate the control lines or just the point clouds? Yes, of course, uh, software for point cloud processing for strip alignments allows you to, gener uh, allows you to classify point cloud and it allows you to generate control lines. It's very easy. And uh, it usually takes a few minutes. And we will show all steps of data processing during our training. And uh, uh, usually within a few days, you will get the, the whole knowledge of data processing. You will get all information about workflow. And what you need is just one software to make strip alignment, to classify point cloud, and to create control lines. It's very easy. And to uh, vectorize data set as well. But of course, you need to know how to use this software because in a, uh, you, you should know uh, real techniques and so on. So I would suggest that training is very important. And uh, I think uh, all our clients which, uh, who comes to our, uh, all our clients who come to our training, firstly, they said, okay, we know everything because we made, uh, we are professional surveyors. But after one day, they decided, uh, usually they decided to continue training because we show a lot of the special techniques, a lot of special knowledges, how to improve, improve accuracy, how to combine data set and so on. Our presentation is just a small level of, of our knowledges, usually. I think Evgeny will prove it, uh, usually we, and we open for a, a new investigation techniques and usually we combine our uh, knowledges with our, uh, other professionals from this team. Today we had a very interesting questions about accuracy. And if you think about what kind of factors with this laser scanning are influencing accuracy? There are practically, it's not a rocket science. Number of points, angles, distances. And so there are practically those three variables 
which you can vary quite a lot with the drone. You can change those variables quite a lot with the drone. You can change those variables on the ground. So I have a kind of feeling that there are quite uh, there are ways to get even better accuracy than, for example, three centimeters or or ten centimeters, just by kind of smarter uh, analysis of the point cloud. I'm totally agree with you, and of course we uh, we study a lot of possibility to increase accuracy. As you remember, first time when we met three years ago, uh, we just uh, used photogrammetry, and uh, we. We were, uh, we were lucky that we achieve accuracy within five or 10 centimeters. After that, we improve accuracy for photogrammetry within two centimeters. And uh, right now we're just uh, working uh, and uh, together with our team, all our users receive uh, a, new, a new version of software, a new technology, a new workflow to increase our accuracy. Uh, to, uh, and we work together with, uh, with all our uh, clients to improve uh, products as well. So I think uh, it's just starting point with the LiDAR. So uh, as you can see right now, it's just a small example of, of our uh, improvement of LiDAR technology. Before, uh, there is no any solution right now in the market where, where you can use LiDAR on the drone, like this one. And you use the same one LiDAR system for ground survey. And you don't need to spend a lot of money just to pay for the same sensor or in the backpack. So we just provide a special equipment just to improve your flexibility in the work. If there is some spaces where there is no possibility to fly or where it's better to get a survey from the ground, you can use this one equipment. It's very easy and uh, just install it here. And we, we made it because some of our clients ask us, could you create this solution? And we said, yes. Uh, and uh, uh, Bruma, I think, uh, Bruma, one month ago, you just told me, where is, the, where is the backpack? And now it is here. So we just, uh, wait. and uh, the same situation with the software. Uh, as soon as we receive some feedbacks, we increase uh, productivity of the software. One month ago, or the productivity of the software was efficiency of the software of point cloud creating, was just uh, create point clouds within 30 minutes. But right now it's just three minutes. So you just, as soon as you uh, join our team, uh, as, as soon as, our, uh, as you join our community, you will get a lot of improvements in the future. I just wanted to add one uh, intro, uh, issue that like to if you think about making tree wise forest inventory with the, with the photogrammetry, you need to fly double grid. So you need to spend more resources of your drone, less productivity. While with LiDAR, you don't need to do double grid. You just get it in one line. Yes, yeah, sure. And uh, this is, uh, and if you process data in a forest with a photogrammetry, I think it's very difficult to process data set. Uh, Evgeny, uh, uh, as soon as Evgeny process a lot of data set, he knows that how difficult to align images in a forest in a high, uh, high wind, for example. But uh, with LiDAR, you always have direct measurement.